Hey guys, this is Homework with Miss Ray. Uh, as promised, uh, this week you guys will have three readings to prepare you for our first essay that we're going to start working on this Friday. Um, this is one of the pieces that we're reading this Monday, which is chapter one from the story, but not buddy. What I would like you to do is to write this prompt at the top. So that says, think, losing someone can change your life for the better or the worse. What does that mean? Losing someone can change your life for the better or the worse. When I think of losing someone, I think of someone moving away. As I told you guys, my mom moved away. Um, she got married. And so the man that she married lives in Louisiana. So I lost her presence here in Texas. Losing someone means maybe you're not friends with some, someone anymore. Maybe they moved. Maybe there was a break in the relationship. Maybe you had a breakup. Maybe the unfortunate happened and someone passed away. Losing someone can change your life for the better. Maybe you didn't need that friend or the worse. I don't have my mom to hang out with on the weekend or, you know, when I lost my grandmother, you know, our whole family changed. The whole dynamic of our family changed. So we are going to write an essay explaining the importance of how moments of pain can help us grow in our lives. So even though bad things happen, we can really learn from them. And so we're gonna be looking at three different circumstances or scenarios where people experience loss and how they grow from them. And we're gonna take their experiences to write our own understanding in an essay. So at the top of your paper, I want you to copy this. And then I also want you to write gathering evidence because this is really what we're doing. We are reporters, we are learners from other people. And so we're gonna take notes, we're gonna look at this as if we're trying to learn something from somebody else in written form, okay? So make sure you have your passage with you. Um, I also provided you with your Tim's grandmother sheet. Your Tim's grandmother sheet, we are only focusing on the back. So make sure you have that with you, okay? All right, <clears throat> here we go. Sorry, my voice is a little raspy. I'm filming this on Friday and Thursday. I was at the girls volleyball game scrimmage and I was shouting and rooting. And so my voice is a little nasty. Um, so I apologize in advance. Here we go. Here we go again. We were all standing in line waiting for breakfast when one of the caseworkers came in and ped down the line. Uh-oh, this meant bad news. Either they'd found a foster home for somebody or somebody was about to get paddled. All the kids watched the woman as she moved along the line, her high-heeled shoes sounding like little firecrackers going off on the wooden floor. So this, of course, our thoughts and this is also action he's telling us what someone is doing what is he thinking okay what is he thinking now shoot she stopped at me and said are you buddy Caldwell I said it's bud not buddy ma'am she put her hand on my shoulder and took me out of the line. Then she pulled Jerry, one of the littler boys, over. Aren't you Jerry Clark? He nodded. Boys, good news. Now that the school year has ended, you both have been accepted in new temporary care homes starting this afternoon. Jerry asked the same thing I was thinking. Together? She said, why no, Jerry, you'll be in the home with three little girls. Jerry looked like he just found out they were going to dip him in a pot of boiling milk. And Bud, she looked at some paper she was holding. Oh yes, 
the Amoses. You'll be with Mr. and Mrs. Amos and their son, who's 12 years old. That makes him just two years older than you, doesn't it, bud? Yes, ma'am. So if I had to pair all of this, what would it be? I can hear some of you saying in my mind, this is all dialogue. And there's also some thoughts in here. This is also an emotion, an emotion of fear. Girls, yuck. <laughs> so what does the dialogue tell us? What does the previous paragraph tell us? I want you to be thinking about that. We are gonna go back and look at it just to process everything. She said, I'm sure you'll both be very happy. Me and Jerry looked at each other. So here's dialogue one more time. And then here's action. What is them looking at each other supposed to tell us? Without words, what are they thinking? Are they excited? Are they upset? Are they worried? What do you think? All right, let's turn the page. Guys, remember you can pause this tape um, because it's recorded, but I'm going to keep going as if it's just me by myself. The woman said, now, now, boys, no need to look so glum. I know you don't understand what it means, but there is a depression going on all over this country. People can't find jobs, and these are very, very difficult times for everybody. We've been lucky enough to find two wonderful families who've opened their doors to you. I think it's best that we show our new foster families that we're very, so this is dialogue. She's talking to the boys. She's trying to cheer them up. You don't need to look so glum. What could I use to figure out what glum means? What just happened? They just found out that they're going to be in foster homes. And neither one of them were excited about it. The opposite of excited is glum. They're down. They're upset. They're sad. Okay. Glum is not a term that you would normally hear, but glum is an older term, which is perfect because she uses, there's a depression going on. So this text could be taking place back in 1930, maybe even 1960. Um, depression is an emotional um, term, but depression was also used at a time when America suffered economic distress. Um, people didn't have jobs. People were losing their homes. It was just a really difficult time for America. So glum is an old term that we don't really use anymore. So these are both clues that tell us this story does not take place in 2019. All right. She dragged out the word very uh-oh, sorry guys, my light turned off in the classroom. There we go. She dragged out the word very, waiting for us to finish her sentence for her. What do you think that I'm going to say that's a thought? Jerry said, cheerful, helpful, and grateful. I moved my lips and mumbled. Mm. Dialogue, action. What do Buzz actions show us? We use these feet to show actions, but what do the actions show us? What is the fact that he's not saying anything show us? How am I supposed to understand how he feels? She smiled and said, unfortunately, you won't have time for breakfast. I'll have a couple of pieces of fruit put in a bag. In the meantime, go to the sleep room and strip your bread, your beds and gather all your things. So we have dialogue again. She's giving them instructions. Here we go again. This is the second time the author has said this. Here we go again, and if we flip back to the beginning, here we go again. Now we find out that he's in a foster home. 
If you know anything about foster homes, if you've ever seen it in a movie, foster homes are places where children go who don't have families. And sometimes students, not students, kids who are students, but kids get moved around a lot. So this has probably happened to him before. So here we go again. Here we go again. I can tell that he's probably frustrated with this process. But let's see. Here we go again. I felt like I was walking in my sleep as I followed Jerry back to the room where all of the boys' beds were gym jammed together. This was the third foster home I was going to and I'm used to packing up and leaving, but it still surprises me that there are always a few seconds right after they tell you you've got to go when my nose gets all runny and my throat gets all choky and my eyes get all stingy but the tears coming out doesn't happen to me anymore. I don't know what it, I don't know when it happened, ah, sorry. I don't know when it first happened, but it seems like my eyes don't cry anymore. Guys, this is thoughts, but I love this paragraph. I love it. And you know what? I got so excited reading this story. Can we go back and number our paragraphs? That's totally my fault. Let's just go back. So this way, when we reference it on Friday, we don't have any problems. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17 is my favorite paragraph so far. And we'll go back and I'll talk about why. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Sorry. Sorry about that. So I love paragraph 17 because not only is it thought, but it's also emotion. Not only is it emotion, but it's an emotion that I have felt before. Maybe not as strong as Bud, but I just love this. So let's pick apart this paragraph. He, I felt like I was walking in my sleep as I followed Jerry back to the room where all of the boys' beds were jam jammed together. This is the third foster home. So I didn't look at this before. Yes, I read this before, but before I did this assignment. This is the third foster home. So he's been moving over and over again. That is so frustrating. I was going to, and I'm used to packing up and leaving, but it still surprises me that there are always a few seconds right after they tell you you've got to go, when my nose gets runny, my throat gets all choky, my eyes get all stingy. You ever think about a time when you get so upset, but you don't want anybody to know? And the pain of actually having to hide how you feel hurts. Like it would just be easier to just cry and get it all out, but you can't because you don't want to feel embarrassed. You don't want to seem like a big baby. So you hold it in and it hurts so much that your throat gets all choky, your eyes get all stingy because you're literally fighting your body from showing the emotions that you feel. Can you just imagine a time when you had to do that and how it made you feel? What was that moment like? What pushed you to the point where you had to fight back all of those emotions? But the tears coming out doesn't happen to me anymore. What does that mean? The tears coming out doesn't happen anymore. I don't know when it first happened, but it seems like my eyes don't cry anymore. Guys, I'm getting emotional just thinking about this. So the fact that he's gone through so much pain, it's like he's numbed. I'm going to put a little numb next to my emotion person. He is numb. like, And it's almost like he's not numb because he still feels the emotion, but it's to the point where he's cried so much, he's felt so much pain that he's empty. I don't have any more to give. I felt this choky, I stingy emotion when my mom moved and I didn't want her to feel sad 
that she was leaving me. I mean, I'm 32, so it's like, come on, don't be a big baby. But me and my mom are super close. She's my best friend. And I felt that throat choky, eye stingy um, feeling. And so um, I totally like this just makes me think about um, that time. All right. So Jerry sat on his bed and I could tell that he was losing the fight not to cry. So Jerry and Bud's emotions are a little different. Jerry was losing his fight. So this might be something that foster children actually do where they don't cry or they don't show their emotions or they're just done. They're numb to this. But it looks like Jerry, he's losing his fight. So these are actions. These are thoughts. Okay. Tears were popping out of his eyes and slipping down his cheeks. I sat down next to him and said, I know being in a house with three girls sounds terrible, Jerry, but it's a lot better than being with a boy who's a couple of years older than you. I'm the one who's going to have problems. An older boy is going to want to fight, but those little girls are going to want to treat you real good. They're going to treat you like some kind of special pet or something. This is dialogue. What is Bud trying to do? I think he's trying to make Jerry feel better. Because remember, Jerry is younger than Bud. Jerry said, you really think so? This right here shows me that Bud and Jerry have, Jerry have a relationship. So there's a friendship there between the two of them. And showing that they're in the same room, they probably have slept together and shared experiences together. This is inferencing and connecting the dots. If Bud was not close with Jimmy and I mean Jerry and Jerry was just some rando, he probably wouldn't waste his time talking to Jerry. We would probably see him doing a Leo and Stargirl situation where Bud may notice that Jerry is crying, Bud may comment on what Jerry is doing, but there's really no connection. This shows that they actually have a relationship. I said, I trade you in a minute. The worst thing that's going to happen to you is that they are going to make you play house a lot. They'll probably make you be the baby and will hug you and do this kind of jump to you. I tickled Jerry under his chin and said, ga ga goo goo baby baby. More dialogue and more action. So now he's trying to cheer Jerry up. Jerry couldn't help but smile. I said, you're going to be great. More dialogue and actions. What does Jerry's smile show? Think about the transition. Jerry was about to lose his will to, uh, to he was losing his fight to not cry. And now, oh, my squiggle went too far. Let me slide this over so you can see. And now, you know, Jerry's being cheered up. So he's feeling a little better. Jerry looked like he wasn't so scared anymore. So I went over to the bed and started getting ready. Even though it was me that was in a lot of trouble, I couldn't help but feel sorry for Jerry. Not only because he was going to have to live around three girls, but also because being six, okay, now we know how old Jerry is, is a real tough age to be at. Most folks think you start to be a real adult when you're 15 or 16 years old, but that's not true. So these are thoughts right here, but that's not true. It really starts when you're around six. Now I want you guys to think about why the age six matters so much. Could this be when he first ended up in a foster home? Why is he so focused on the age six? Does he see himself in Jimmy? Was he Jimmy at one point? It's, a sick, it's at six that grown folks don't think you're a cute little kid anymore. They talk to you and expect that you understand everything that they mean. And you best understand too, if you aren't looking for some real trouble, because it's at around six that grown folks stop giving you little swats and taps and jump clean up on 
jump clean up to giving you slugs that'll knock you right down and have you seeing stars in the middle of the day. The first foster home I was in taught me that real quick. Okay, so these are thoughts and emotions. So this tells us something. Now, if you've ever seen, oh, what is that movie called? Meet the Robinsons. Um, it's a cartoon and I think it's on Netflix, um, but it's about a little boy who um, travels back into the future um, to stop, I think it's to stop his father from um, being killed or to stop his mom from giving him up um, for adoption. Something along those lines, I haven't seen in a while, but it's a really great film. And he's in a foster home and he says, and it's known that once you reach a certain age, parents don't want you because they want babies. And so at a certain age, it's harder for kids to get adopted into a foster home. And so some foster homes are not kind and warm and loving. And so I think right here, Bud gives us a glimpse of what he really thinks Jerry is going to experience that he's not going to receive love or kindness or an opportunity to be himself, but it might be difficult and painful. And so think about our question. Losing someone can change your life for the better or the worse. Who did Buddy possibly lose if he's in a foster home? <laughs> Losing someone could change your life for the better or for the worse. Has Buddy's life changed for the better or the worse? What proof from this text could you use to show that moments of pain can help us grow in our lives? How has Buddy grown? What has he learned about himself? What has he learned about the world? Whether it's positive or negative, we learn something and we grow from something. What has Buddy experienced? So I want you to gather evidence. So let's look. Let's pull out our Tim's grandmother sheet. During the blank, the character was thinking about blank. This lets me know. So I'm going to choose big moments, guys. I'm not going to choose the easy ones. I'm going to choose this moment we just talked about. So. During the, make it a little bigger, during the preparation to leave, the character was thinking about his previous foster home. And I'm going to add experience. Okay, this lets me know he suffered pain and has lost hope. I'm going to say he's lost hope in adults. And I'm going to use paragraph 25. Okay. I'm going to use paragraph 25. And I'm also, let me slide this. I'm going to use paragraph 25. And I'm also going to use that emotional paragraph 17. Because he's lost his fight to cry. And he talks about the pain that he experienced. Okay. We're moving to higher levels. So when I start, when I start developing my paragraphs, this is something that I can use. Okay. When the character, so I'm looking at actions. When the character blank, I understand that. So let's see. I'm going to use Jerry in paragraph 18. When the character Jerry 
was fighting. Sorry. Was losing. The fight against eh, run out of room. His tears. I understand that. Now this is higher level thinking, guys. What do we understand? How old is Jerry? Jerry is six. And Buddy is ten. Okay, and I know he's 10 because I know a little math. In paragraph nine, it says, Mr. Mrs. Amos and their son, who's 12 years old, and that makes him just two years older than you. So I can tell that when the character Jerry was losing the fight against his tears, I understand that he hasn't experienced as much pain as Bud. So he hasn't learned, and I want to write that differently, but he hasn't really learned how to fight or, mm, I want to word that differently. Uh, I understand he hasn't, he hasn't learned. Yeah, let me change that. I like that better. Yeah. He hasn't learned, he hasn't learned or it's in there. What do I want to say? Uh, I understand that he hasn't because Bud has gone through so much that he just doesn't feel the pain anymore. So he hasn't. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave it the way I had it. He hasn't, uh, Jerry was losing the fights against his tears. I understand that he hasn't experienced, I'll say he hasn't experienced this as much as Bud. Bud has had more experience in this. And that's an assumption and that's an inference because I don't know. Okay. So there's no, uh, we didn't really mark any imagery. So I'm going to scratch that out, even though, you know, it does say that you could hear her, her, um, her heels tapping. It's not really that deep. Uh, and I don't see any real imagery. Now, if you notice imagery and you want to do imagery, um, that's totally cool, but I'm going to skip it. All right. So emotions. There are tons of emotions. Let's see. I'm going to do paragraph eight. I love uh, how the author describes Jerry looked like he just found out they were going to dip him in a pot of boiling milk. So Jerry's reaction to and what did he just find out? He found out he was going to be living with three girls. Jerry's reaction to living with three girls confirms my understanding of he oh now this is deeper maybe he lives in a foster home where there's nothing but boys or the fact that he's been with bud for so long what would that be like to live with girls when you probably never done that before so this confirms my understanding of he has probably never lived with girls Okay, so I am going to give you dialogue and we didn't mark any information, 
but I am going to add information now that I'm going back to think about it. That's what readers do and they evaluate. We do get information about what happens when you're six years old. Why is it important that Buddy ends this chapter with paragraph 25? So I want you to use paragraph 25 for your information. And there's so much dialogue. I mean, this whole chapter is filled with dialogue. I want you to mark the paragraph. So what paragraph are you going to use for your dialogue? And you're going to use paragraph 25 for your information. All right. So I can't wait for us to talk about this in the morning. You will have a Plickers quiz with multiple choice questions about this text. So please be prepared to um, receive that quiz on Tuesday morning. All right, guys, this has been a great read. And I really can't wait to talk with you guys about it tomorrow. Y'all have a good night. Bye bye.